Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games, I'm Lee, and in this video we'll be taking a deep dive into the Demons of Nurgle. In this video we'll be taking all our information from the Agents of Chaos Warcry supplement book, and we'll be taking a little look about the background for the Maggot Kin of Nurgle, and why they're in the 8 points, then we'll look at the fighter abilities, and the lead abilities for all the different fighters and we'll go through all the fighter cards looking at their stats and exactly what they do in the game and we'll go through all the models that are available for the demons of Nurgle and we'll take a look at them individually using the Games Workshop website as our guide. Right let's get started and find out exactly why the demons of Nurgle are in the 8 points and how they fit in to Warcry. Nurgle is the Lord of Despair the pustulant god of entropy and rot. Wherever the mortal and demonic children of the Plague Lord walk, sickness and death are sure to follow. Of all the Chaos Gods, it is perhaps Nurgle who has the greatest interest in conquering the Eight Points. The island between realms is a continent-sized laboratory for the incubation of new diseases, while the Arkways themselves are fine vectors through which to transmit these gifts across the mortal realms entire. All manner of vile creatures pledge allegiance to Nurgle, and what might be said to be the foulest of them are Nurgle's demonic children, for each is a shard of the Plague Lord's own rotten majesty bestowed with sentience. These beings are disease made manifest and exemplify Nurgle's perverse cycle. Gallow bands of rotbringers and befoul bands of demons often focus their efforts upon desecrating shrines and infecting those enemies who encounter them. Through these acts of sacrilege, their contagions are transmitted far quicker than the Nurglites could ever imagine through simple slaughter. That's our introduction to the Demons of Nurgle and how they fit into the 8 points of Warcry, but now let's take a look at the abilities and we'll start with going through the fighter abilities that all the fighters with the rune mark for the Demons of Nurgle can use, and then we'll also take a look at the leader ability that all the leaders can use. And let's start with that fighter ability, which is a double called Disgustingly Resilient. And for this, we roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. And for each 4+, plus, remove one damage point allocated to this fighter. So these abilities that all the fighters with the rune mark can use really tell us about how to kind of play the tactics for that warband and with these guys they're just going to keep replenishing so any damage they get there's potential for them to reclaim some of those damage points. So this is a really great ability, roll a number of dice equal to the value of the ability. If that's a six you know you could potentially get some huge numbers of damage points removed and being only a double you could use it even realistically up to three times in each hero phase so this is a really strong double ability that the whole warband can use and a really good way to start the warband off and start thinking how we might want to play them tactically. Next we've got our leader ability and there's one leader ability that all the leaders with the leader rune mark and the demons of Nurgle rune mark can use and it's a triple called Grandfather's Blessing. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the strength characteristic of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. As with our fighter abilities, the leader ability really tells a story as well. So, you know, improving that strength really wants you to focus around having a good amount of friendly fighters around the leader so we're starting to put them into groups so if you wanted to go with a swarm kind of tactic then having lots of them within six inches of your leader and then using this triple could really improve their strength and then the possibility of them doing even more damage to the enemy. Now let's start with the individual fighters and see their fighter cards and individual abilities as well. And we'll start with our first fighter, which is the Poxbringer. And now this is gonna be a leader, and this is our first leader as well. And you can buy this separately for £17.50. So just for the one model, this will put you back £17.50, but this is gonna be the first leader that you'll see in the book. And this one comes in at 195 points. It's got a movement of three, toughness four, can take 22 wounds. He's got two options for the weapons. The first is a range weapon, minimum three, maximum seven, making two attacks, strength three, dealing three to six on a crit. And then if you get up close, he's also got this kind of sword weapon, which is a range of one, making four attacks, strength four, 
dealing two to five on a crit. So it's this weapon that stands out for me as the best one. I don't think he's going to do an awful lot of damage with that first one. And with no kind of ability that you'd usually see with a kind of magical distance weapon like this, I don't think this is the ideal leader to go with. And you're not going to see any other abilities for this leader except the one that we went through previously. So for 195 points, I'm pretty underwhelmed here. The movement's not great. He's not all that tough. He's certainly not that strong. And the damage output, when you compare it to the number of attacks, isn't huge either. But let's move on and start looking at some other leaders. And that brings us on to this one, who's the Spoilpox Scrivener. And this is an individual miniature that's going to set you back £20. But I'll put links in the description to Element Games, where you can save on all these prices. Right, so the Spoilpox Scrivener is 175 points. He's got a movement three, toughness four, can take 22 wounds. We're starting to see that leader ability room mark and we've got another room mark. So we're gonna get some abilities we haven't seen yet. And this guy is gonna get up close with that huge mouth with a range of one, making two attacks, strength five, dealing three to five on a crit. So this one, I think I really like the look of this miniature. It's just crazy good. Um, there's so much going on. It just looks awesome. And I think for 175 points, it's pretty low for a leader. You'll see in a minute we get two extra abilities. So that's really good. Um, but two attack strength five, Dina three to five isn't brilliant. But I think it's going to all depend on the abilities as to whether or not we choose this one as our leader. So let's get started with the first ability, which is a triple called Menacing Overseer. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the attack's characteristic of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by friendly fighters while they are within nine inches of this fighter. So I like this one for a triple. I always like the leader abilities that give extra attacks and adding one to attack characteristics is going to be great, especially when you see some of the fighters that we see later on who already have a high number that they can roll. So this is a really good ability to get started with. But we've got a second one, which is a quad called Disgusting Sneeze. And with a big mouth like that, it's going to be a big sneeze and you know it's going to be disgusting. And for this, we pick a visible enemy fighter within nine inches of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. And for each two plus, allocate two damage points to that fighter. So another great ability for a quad here, potentially you could roll six dice and then for every two plus, it's two points of damage. So there's a really good chance you're gonna deal 10 or even more points of damage here towards a fighter. And if you wanna target one of the larger, stronger enemy fighters, or even completely take out one of the weaker ones in one go, then this is the move to do it. And this is a great leader. And I think this is my favorite leader from all the ones we'll see in this warband it just looks awesome and i really like these abilities and don't forget he still has that triple grandfather's blessing ability too so he's coming packed with options and a great looking miniature our next leader option is probably a contender for one of the best names in warcry the sloppity bile piper and this is a crazy looking model and if you wanted to buy this it's 20 pounds at games workshop the retail price and the Sloppity Bile Piper is going to come in at 165 points, so pretty low for a leader. He's got movement 4, toughness 4, can take 22 wounds. He's got the leader rune mark and one other rune mark for an ability we haven't seen yet. And for his weapon, it's a range of 1, 3 attacks, strength 4, dealing 2 to 4 on a crit. So for 165 points, we get a little bit more movement here, which is nice. Still toughness 4 and strength 4, so pretty average on that. Nothing's really standing out here, um, but we'll wait and see on the ability because that really could decide if you wanted to use the Sloppity Bile Piper as your leader. Um, I think it's a great model. It would look really cool on the table and a great model to build a warband around. But this leader ability that they're going to come with is a double called Jolly Gut Pipes. Another great name. And until the end of the battle round, add one to the move characteristics of move actions made by friendly fighters that start within six inches of this fighter. So this is a pretty good double, and now we can add one to move action. So this is one where we can choose whether we wanna really drive our fighters forward compared to the others who can improve strength or improve attack actions. So you've really got three different leaders that you could choose there, and even taking one of these in a hero, you could combine attacks with movement. So that might be a good option, and you'd have two great miniatures then leading your warband. 
Now we're moving on to our first set of miniatures, and these are the Plague Bearers of Nurgle, and there's 10 models in the set for £22.50 for the RRP. And this is going to give you a few options. You're going to get a leader in here, which is the Plague Ridden, and for 120 points, this could be an option to go with for a leader or a hero. And you're going to get a Movement 3, Toughness 3, he can take 20 wounds, he's got the Leader Rune Mark, and one other Rune Mark for an ability we haven't seen yet. He's got a Movement 1, can make 4 attacks, Strength 3, dealing two to four on a crit. So for a leader option, I'm not thinking this is gonna be a great one. You do get that leader ability, grandfather's blessing, and this extra ability is gonna be a fighter ability. So no extra leader abilities here. The strength and defense uh, toughness isn't all that great, but let's have a look at the plague bearers. So you can either build 10 plague bearers or you can build nine and then take in that um, additional leader. So with the Plague Bearer, they're 50 points. So they've got Movement 3, Toughness 3, can take 10 wounds, and then their weapon range is 1, 3 attacks, Strength 3, dealing 1 to 4 on a crit, and they're going to get that same ability that we'll take a look at in a second that the leader would have. So these are your chaff units, and you can certainly field a lot of these at 50 points each. But the ability they come with is a triple called Cloud of Flies. Until the end of the battle round, subtract one from the attack's characteristic to a minimum of one of attack actions that target this fighter. Okay, so this might be good if you want to kind of make one fighter or one group of fighters hold on to an objective. You can use this triple to take one from all the attack uh, character action. Sorry, all the attacks characteristics that are going to make attack actions that against that fighter. So holding that objective, reducing the number of attacks being made of them could be a really important tactic to play with this warband. Our next box of fighters that we can get are the Plague Drones of Nurgle. And these are £35 the RRP. You get three models and they look like they'd be quite large. And again, with these, we can make one leader with two fighters or three fighters. And so with the leader option, it's a Plague Bringer. And this is 230 points. We've got a movement of six, toughness four, and can take 35 wounds. We've got the leader room mark. So we're gonna get that grandfather's blessing ability. We've also got the flight room mark and one other room mark for an ability we haven't seen yet. And for the attack for this one, it's a range of one. We can make four attacks, strength three, dealing two to four on a crit. So this is much better with the movement and it can fly and being able to take 35 wounds is always great. And you can do a little bit of damage with this. So this could be a decent option, but here are the fighters that come with it. And they're called plague drones and they're a little bit less at 170 points. And they've got the same, got that movement six, toughness four and can take 30 wounds. They can take a huge amount of damage. They've got an ability we haven't seen yet for a fighter ability and they can fly, but with their Attacking, it's a weapon range of one, three attacks, strength three, dealing one to four on a crit. So while the movement's good, the toughness and the damage they can take is good, this attacking isn't good at all. Um, so we really want to see some bonus to attack coming from the ability. And the ability is a double called Venomous Sting. And we pick a visible enemy fighter within one inches of this fighter and roll a dice. On a two plus, until the end of this battle round, that fighter cannot make move actions or disengage actions. Okay, so it might be worth, although I'm not impressed by the amount of damage they can put out, I think it might be worth including maybe one of these in the warband just to make use of this venomous sting. And if you can take out one of the enemy's strategic fighters who needs to move and cover ground quickly, then that might be a good option. Being able to fly, you could get to them quite quickly over obstacles. So that could be a good tactic. But otherwise, I'm not really impressed by their their stats too much here, but certainly for that venomous sting, it's an option. Now we're on to another great looking model. This is the Beast of Nurgle, and this is going to cost you £27.50 for the one miniature. It looks really great, but don't forget that's just the RRP, so you can get a discount on that. And here's our Beast of Nurgle coming in at 175 points. It's got movement 4, toughness 4, and can take 30 wounds. He's got a rune mark for an ability that we haven't seen yet. And his attacking is a range of one, four attacks, strength four, dealing two to four on a crit. Now for 175 points, I think this is really good. Not only do you get a great looking fighter, but you get a movement four, toughness four and strength four can take 30 wounds and the damage output is not bad at all. Making four attacks at two to four is really great. So I think I'd really want to be including a beast of Nurgle in the warband, but we still haven't seen the ability yet. And this has got a great name, Acidic Slime Trail. Pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter. 
This fighter makes a bonus disengage action. Then allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. Okay, so this is pretty cool. If an enemy fighter comes at you in one of their activations and gets too close, and then you make an attack back to them, you can make a bonus disengage action, leave that acidic slime trail and deal some extra damage. And then you can make another move action and, and escape and put a bit of distance between you. So I think this could be a real contender. 175 points, a no brainer. It's gotta be in the war band. And now we're on to the Nurglings, and these are gonna cost 20 pounds for three sets of Nurglings. And the Nurglings gonna set you back 145 points. They've got a movement of five, toughness three, can take 30 wounds, They've got a rune mark for an ability we haven't seen yet, and their weapon is an attack range one. They can make six attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. So I really like this. You've been able to take 30 wounds, your toughness and strength isn't great, but the movement's not bad at five, and you can make six attacks. So really, you're getting almost two kind of low point fighters worth of attacks here, but you can take a lot of wounds at 30, and that movement's really gonna be handy in this warband, seeing that some of them have only got three for their movement. But let's have a look at that ability, which is a quad called Endless Swarm. Remove a number of damage points allocated to this fighter equal to double the value of this ability. So this is great. I mean, if you wanna use the double, you can get some of those damage points removed, but being able to use this quad ability here, and if you're getting a five or six, you know, you're gonna be able to take away guaranteed 10 or 12 damage points from them, and then they can stay in the fight a lot longer. So for 145 points, with this ability and those stats, they've gotta be included. I really like these. Next, we've got the start collecting set. And this is one of those times where this start collecting set is insane value for Warcry. I think this is a brilliant set to get if you're looking to build a warband around the Demons of Nurgle. It's 55 pounds, but don't forget you can save up to 20% with Element Games, making this under 50. But in there, you get a huge amount and it's almost worth 100 pounds RRP. You get the Poxbringer, you get those Plague Drones, you get the Nurglings, and you're also gonna get the plague bearers. And so you're getting a huge amount of fighters and leader options in that box. And here are the fighter cards that for the fighters and leaders that are included in the set. And you see that the points value is anything from 1640 to 1755. So this one start collecting set is giving you more than enough for everything you need for a campaign as well. So you can do loads with this start collecting set and you're gonna get your Poxbringer leader, you've got a plague, Bringer and a Plague Ridden, who you can choose as either leaders or hero. Then you can use three Plague Drones, 10 Plague Bearers, and three Nurglings. So you've got a huge amount here, and this is great. So out of the nine possible fighters that are available for the Demons of Nurgle, you get six in this one set alone. Personally, I don't like the Pox Bringer as a leader, and I'd certainly use the Spoil Pox Scrivener for my leader for the Warband. He's got that Grandfather's Blessing already, but with those other two abilities, the Menacing Overseer and Disgusting Sneeze, I think it's a no-brainer. This is a great option for a leader. I like the Sloppity Bile Piper, but I think I'd just be choosing that for the name. So no point in doing that, but a great miniature all the same. So if I wanted to put this together, I think I'd definitely get the Start Collecting set and then pick up the Spoil Pox Scrivener as a leader. It's just a shame it's like, what, 20 pounds for that one miniature, but I think it's worth it. You could also pop a proxy if you wanted to. So you could use the Pox Bringer from the set as your Spoil Pox Scrivener. There's no reason not to, and even do some modifications to the model yourself, add in some kind of banner or scroll. I think that would work. And I'd also love to put a Beast of Nurgle in there. I think the ability's great. The statistics are really good. And that's certainly one of my favorite fighters from the whole set available for the Demons of Nurgle. So definitely want to get a Beast of Nurgle. So putting together, you know, the starter set, the Beast of Nurgle, and if you wanted to get a separate model for the Sporepox Scrivener, you could still do this for under £100 with the discounts at Element Games. And if you're interested in looking at the Demons of Nurgle or any other warbands, then I'll put down the links to the Warcry Agents of Chaos supplement book and the other supplement books too, and also a link to Element Games where you can find the start collecting set, which is more than enough for a warband. And you can get that at the moment for £46.75 with the discount there. And that's gonna be enough for a warband. And if you wanted to treat yourself to a Beast of Nurgle or a Spoil 
Pox Scrivener or the Sloppity Bile Piper, then you could do that too. But these links will be affiliate links, but it won't cost you anything extra. In fact, you can save up to 20% and for every sale made through link, I get a small commission, which helps me develop the channel and I really appreciate that support. So thanks so much for that. So what do you think? Is this a war band that you're interested in? Could you imagine playing the Demons of Nurgle in Warcry? Let me know in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. But I'm really impressed with this and I think each time I do one of these deep dive videos, I like the warband a lot more than when I started off looking at them. But these look great and I'm certainly interested in picking up that start collecting set and a beast of Nurgle. But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share our ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.